Hey everyone, welcome to week seven of TCL 76. Um, coming close to the end here, uh, not much left to do, but we will kick off with our usual demos. So Mindy, take yeah. it away. Yeah, who would like to, who'd like to go first this week? We can go first. Awesome. All right, take it away. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. So our, I will do the demo and then I can share my screen and Marco is going to talk about the code. So our task is about deleting atom from the shopping list. So we have a delete button after each atom. And once you hit the delete button, uh, you ask another message from the dialog pop-up window to make sure that you are deleting the bread, the, the atom from the shopping list to confirm it again. Once you hit OK, you will delete it from the shopping list. To check the database, so I was on invite friend. Oh, so this item, we have beef egg plants and show my we can do it one more time. I did it beef and then go to the database. It was deleted from the database. Okay. And Marcos, do you want to talk about the code? Can you hear us? Starting to get his microphone to work, it looks like in the chat. Mm -hmm. In the chat. Okay. I'll give you a minute. Mm -hmm. I have to make noise when there's quiet, apparently. <laughs> Does anybody else get a song in their head? I always get songs in my head when there's when I'm just like waiting for something and it's quiet. Thank you. So I'm like do 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 do. That one like goes off in my head pretty frequently, actually. Is it like is it like a uh, call waiting music or elevator music just comes <laughs> on to fill <laughs> fill the void? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's working now. Hello. Uh, th there you go. Awesome. There we go. Okay, sweet. Uh, yeah, let me just look at my screen here. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I'm on my phone right now, but I'm looking at my computer. I have I had the code up, luckily. So then I'm also looking at Emma's screen. So yeah, we'll start where at list uh, list item dot jsx. So we're gonna start where we had. So if you go all the way to the bottom, um, first we just we're gonna have a button. And we implemented the, it's going to have an on click and we're going to go through our handle delete function. So we'll go up to handle delete. <clears throat> and then in here, we went ahead and wrote a statement where we Wait. get a window to confirm. Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to find handle delete. Oh, okay. Sure. I think you were in list item. Copy in the, in the wrong file. Yeah, yeah it's, it's in list item. Um, yeah. Is this? Okay, okay. Uh, over here. Oh, this Yeah, hey. and then at the top. There we go. Yep, there it is. So first we get um, an alert asking if you want to confirm uh, the, the deletion of the item, and then it'll, it'll give it by name, whatever item that is. And then if uh, you get past that, if you say yes, uh, it's going to go through local storage, find that item, and then we pass in into the delete function the both the list path and the item, and then that will be deleted from um, both the list and in Firebase. And then let me go ahead, let's go to firebase.js, and we'll just quickly talk about the delete item function here. And so I think the the one thing that we kind of had trouble with was figuring out uh, the layers of Firebase um, and figuring out what we really needed to pass in 
into the function and then also how we were going to use delete doc and what we needed to pass in there. Um, so uh, basically we pass in list list path and then item. And then we have our try catch here. We're going to await the delete doc, which is from delete doc is from Firebase. It's something that we found in the docs to use. And then, like I said, we were just having a bit of trouble figuring out what we were going to put inside of delete doc. Um, but after a little while, a little research, we did kind of figure out the, the layers of how it works um, because we both really haven't used Firebase that much. So that was really good to learn. But yeah, it was pretty simple. It was a pretty simple function, but um, that's how we came up with our code for the week. Nice. Any questions for Emma and Marcus? Um, just generally for everyone, like over the past few weeks, have you all started to feel more comfortable diving into documentation and trying to find, you know, stuff that you need? Um, at least being able to sift through it in a faster, in a faster way, just to get to what you want, because there there can be like a whole lot of things going on. So, do you all feel a bit more comfortable doing that now? What What is your approach? I think in our case, we need to. Uh, we also use Stack Over Stack Overflow, and other documentations. Like people are running the same issue online even from years ago. So very helpful to see their approach. Um, and the first time the difficulty we are running into is from the Firebase doc, they only have three layers. So that gave us some, like we have misunderstanding. It has to be only three arguments to put into the doc parameters. And then, real, then we quickly realized that it's not the case. Um, Maybe their database is more simpler than ours. So that's why we figure out we need to pass like four arguments to target the item we want to delete. That was our experience. Any other questions? Thoughts? All right, we'll move over to Allison and Sarah. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, let me share all my things. Oh, offer. Okay, so I'm gonna run through the demo for everyone this morning. Um, we were tasked with figuring out how to filter items based on when their next purchase date is. So really how urgent is it for the user to purchase that next item? So right off the bat, you'll see the four categories, overdue, soon, kind of soon, not soon, and inactive. Um, overdue represents items that Firebase tells you, you should have purchased this by now, based on your buying habits, based on when you purchased it, based on when you last purchased it, based on how many times you've purchased it, you should have purchased blueberries by now. Um, soon is communicating, hey, apples, bananas, and oranges. Like, yeah, you purchased apples recently. That's good. Based on when you bought it last, how many times you've purchased it, et cetera, you're going to want to buy it again soon, even though you've already purchased it because um, I bought it today. Um, bananas and oranges, you're going to want to buy those soon. And then same thing for kind of soon, not soon, and inactive represents um, items that you really purchased a long time ago and they're not even on your horizon yet. Uh, the user has does not need to worry about buying sugar anytime soon. It's like two months away, 60 days away. Um, so I'm gonna click off a few items and we can watch what happens. Um, I'll go ahead and click off flower and you can see that it jumps up to soon. Um, this is just saying, yeah, you purchased it, but based on when you bought it, all of that criteria, you're still going to want to buy it again soon. Um, same with ham. It'll jump up and move to the soon category. You'll notice that once those items are checked off, they'll jump into alphabetical order um, and the other items remain in alphabetical order. We kept it like this because we liked that 
the checked off items were going to be clumped together and the non-checked off items were going to be clumped together. Um, and as you go on, those items will stay categorized and lumped together in those ways. Um, yeah, um, I can also kind of go into what's going on in Firebase too. Um, but I feel like as far as the user experience goes, that's kind of what you can expect. Um, in Firebase, sugar I decided was gonna be our inactive item. So you can see that I created sugar as an item all the way back in, in January 4th, 2021. I don't really bake a lot. So I only bought sugar five times in the past three years. This is telling me, okay, based on your purchasing habits, the next time you're gonna buy sugar is gonna be June 27th, 2028. So you don't need to worry about sugar for a while. Um, blueberries, I first added it last week and since then I've bought it 11 times. I should have purchased it yesterday by now. So this item is overdue. Um, all the others are, I just added them, but you kind of get the idea. These were just sort of added in and then checked off and then purchased only once. Yeah, Sarah, do you feel like I covered everything? Yes, yes, sorry. Cool. Um, all right, sweet. Well, in that case, um, can bring up the code. Okay, that's a little big for me. Sorry, everybody. Um, okay, so the main things that we needed to include in our code were we needed to create and export a function called create, sorry, compare purchase urgency. Um, this was basically how all of our items were going to be compared to each other. Um, I was excited about get days between dates. This was a function that um, Devin helped me create last week um, and it was exciting to get to use it in a new way um, and kind of manipulate the function to get it to use it how I needed it this time. Um, we, this was, Sarah's doing this was witchcraft in my eyes, but it was really amazing how she was able to um, manipulate our data without completely changing um, data. Um, I can also talk about um, how we decided to separate them out into these categories. Um, we needed the items to be broken down into these five different lists, overdue soon, kind of soon, not soon, inactive. Um, this criteria was given to us in our issue um, so that was pretty easy to implement. We just needed to make sure that we were using the greater than and equal signs correctly. There were a few times where we got a little confused with that, but we figured it out. Um, and let's see, did I skip over anything? I feel like this was the main chunk. And then in list item, I'll let Sarah go ahead and talk about front end stuff. Oh, wait, no. This is right. Okay, cool. Um, so for when it came to rendering the list, um, something that we were first struggling with, um, I know in Firebase, we had that object that we were returning of um, all the list I, lists, lists we made, but something we were considering doing was like jumbling it up into one list and so that we could just push it into the filtered list um well now it's gone but like the filtered set filter list state um so that we could just use the filter actually Allison and I made uh, I believe so um a while back but um Mindy helped us with this part of instead of so oh by the way so the point of why we wanted to do that so that would be easy but we have the issue of we have like six categories so it would be inconvenient and it would give us trouble of like how can we render these individual categories so having that separate out um gave us opportunity to have it like this so we had an object and Mindy gave this idea of using object entries um so we made a filtered object state and um yeah, if you go down to the use effect, yeah, you're highlighting it. Um, yeah, the use effect on line 44. Mm -hmm. So for that, we made 
the filtered list and we changed it to a filtered object instead. And we use object entries to um, render, to mm, make an array of all of our objects. So inactive soon, kind of soon. Um, and, for, and then from there, we go through all of them and we render them or we filter through them for this one. I'm thinking of the other one. We filter through them and it does the check individually. Now with filtered object being filtering through our object of lists, we go down to, uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, we changed it to be filtered object and, um, and now we use object entries again to have our array of objects. And again, we have um, through every category, soon, kind of soon, inactive, so on. Um, we grab the label um, and we render out with map their, the entire list. So that was fun to figure out. And um, Mindy also gave this idea to have all the labels controlled in um, the labels object above in 36. So that was cool um, having it organized there. And then we also used, besides our labels, like our very obvious labels of what they were overdue soon, kind of soon, we use um, exclamation points. Um, we called it a temporary placeholder um, just to show urgency. Um, so it would be more clear of one, the name is already clear as it is, but also kind of showing um, importance by how many more icons versus four different icons. And I think, yeah, I think that was pretty much it for that one. Did I miss yeah. anything? No, just to kind of add on to what you were saying about our labels, um, we really wanted to focus on accessibility and we felt like this was sort of the most obvious way to do it. We knew we didn't want to use or focus too much on color, especially because we're not in the design phase of this project yet. We wanted to make sure that there was something a little bit more obvious and functional. Um, and so we felt breaking it out into these different categories was very immediate to the eye. Um, and the exclamation points were just in addition to that, um, but excited to kind of build that out and to be um, a bit more designed and stylized for sure. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know if y'all have any questions. Awesome. I have a question. Does um do you notice that it is often when you click on something, it almost always goes into soon? Or is that I yeah. think that it hap it's happening because like for instance, sugar, if I check it off, because of the habit, it, it won't move. Okay. Um, everything else is jumping to soon because of when I created it and like, I've only purchased it once, but I can run through a demonstration of when it doesn't jump to soon, if that would be helpful. Honestly, even just saying sugar and not, not move. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I think yeah. everything is expected. It just was like, oh, they're all moving to soon. Was, I wonder if there's a bug in there still, but yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well done indeed. Any other questions? Awesome. Woohoo. Well then y'all, you got through your last uh last paired issues that have been assigned for you. <laughs> and now I'll pass it off to Devin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice, nice work, everyone. All right, so let's get to your very last issue. Or I should say last formal issue. All right. So this one is the one that's very much design oriented. So as a user, I want the app to look professional and welcoming when a user opens it. All right, so the last two weeks of this project will function a little differently from the rest. Your team will self-organize around a lightweight design process to come up with a polished look and feel for your app. So this will require you to make decisions together as a whole team and then implement that vision. So. This process outlined here is just our best suggestion of how to proceed, but you're free to take whatever approach you would like. So this is the last issue on the board, but that's because the expectation is that you will write the stories needed to complete the implementation of your design direction. Uh, if you've looked at the issues board, you've, re you've realized that Sarah's added an issue already, which is great. Um, I've also added one, which was regarding the bug. 
So you could use this as a way to set up, you know, set specific goals for what you want in terms of design. Um, and even with that, I would also still encourage you to add issues for maybe features that would be nice to have. So it still looks like the application is in development. You've thought of, you know, some ongoing development uh, for the app itself. Uh, so, and as always, you can lean on your mentors if you need guidance on how to proceed. So the design process, this is something I'm very not good at. So I tend to lean on, you know, other teammates or other resources, but I do appreciate a good design of an app. So questions you could think of, you know, what, what is the tone you're going for? What is the feeling you're trying to convey? You could do things like coming up with three to five words that best capture how you want the user to perceive your app. Um, you know, what kind of feel are you going for? Is it going to be fun, uh, clean? I don't know what ironic means. Uh, Business-like, you know, maybe elegant, those kinds of things. You, ca you can create a mood board and a mood board helps to get everyone on the same page um, in terms of figuring out direction that you want to take your design. So you can add elements to the mood board. You know, this could be things like just copying images or specific color palettes, those kinds of things. Um, you could design on, decide on the fundamentals of your des design, including the following. So typography, Google fonts is a good place to find stuff. Um, there are other, many other places on the internet. Uh, colors. So we do want to include color at this point, um, but you can make sure that they're accessible. One thing I'd say with respect to accessibility and colors, to pay attention to things like contrast between your foreground and background elements, right? Sometimes if you don't have enough contrast between those two, it makes text a bit difficult to read. Um, things that you could also include would be icons and images. So, you know, find icons, images, uh, at, you know, provide attribution if, if it is required. Uh, other things that you'd have to decide on would be whether you want to create your CSS from scratch or use a framework. Uh, I know we kind of already have some bits of Material UI in this, but I'd leave it up to you all to decide if you want to continue using Material UI or use something else entirely. Uh, as you realize, when other CSS gives you more control at the expense of time taken to actually implement it. Frameworks, you know, give you nice stuff out of the box, but it gives you less control over the look and feel of the components. So if you choose a framework, you know, evaluate the options and pick one that's best suited for your needs. I would say consider things like the quality of documentation, maybe maybe lean towards a framework that's a bit more established and has a lot more uh, support behind it. Some, you know, some there are some frameworks that may work well on one browser, but not so much on another. Um, so look at things like ease of integration, uh, preferably one that's built with accessibility in mind, and one has a fairly active community behind it. So these are just some of, of the examples that you have available now, or maybe even when this when this um, issue was written. I think there are a lot more right now, but you do see things like Chakra UI, Material UI, uh, Shad CN, and all these. Um, so it's free for you all to to pick and design decide on the design. Uh, like I said, I'm not great with design. So I, you know, to ask me to choose colors, I would use sites like uh, colors or coolers.co where it actually gives you, come on, see, yeah, this, this actually allows you to generate a color palette, um, which is helpful for people like me. <laughs> and even things like, you know, pairing fonts, there is a website like Font Pair that gives you options on which fonts work well together. Um, again, if choosing fonts, you want to lean on something that is accessible in terms of being easy to read. Um, I never thought about these things before, but some font types, you may have letters that look very similar based on the size and style of the font. So you want to you wanna look at accessibility in terms of uh, your fonts as well and that is pretty much it for this one uh, with respect to writing your issues 
you you can frame them the way we were before as you know right as writing a user story um you may also want to prioritize and figure out which things need more attention um which things don't because you you do have a limited amount of time at least for this two weeks uh you can keep developing the application afterwards if you want to but keep that two week deadline in mind for presenting a good working application um not sure if any of the other mentors want to jump in here i will say one thing i have seen happen is that uh some collabies try to to, to do too much and end up with a half-baked or broken application when it's time to present. So that's why it's important to prioritize, you know, what is important. What what should we implement at this point in time and what what's nice to have and we could do after the fact. Along those lines, keep your PRs small. The smaller the PR, the more likely that you're going to keep your stuff and scope and the changes working, right? Yeah, I'd agree about not doing too much. I usually find that it's easiest to do layout first, like not think about any of the colors and fonts and all that, but just like kind of get things where you want them and then start to make it look pretty. Are you all excited? Anxious? What are, where are you at? <laughs> I feel <clears throat> excited and nervous. I don't really know like how I'm glad that Nathan, like y'all just touched on, it's like a good starting point is figuring out like where to start kind of. Um, but I think it'll be fun. I like design stuff. So, and I think like this is a good opportunity to really focus on accessibility. I know that that is really becoming an industry standard. And so I think like flexing those muscles is a really good experience and this is a really cool opportunity. Um, I'm also excited. Um, I'm just curious how it's gonna go, our approach and how we're gonna go about planning and yeah, I'm just curious of how we're going to end up not going too big and too small and like how we, oh, and I was curious, what is it going to be our mood? So I'm just thinking about that, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm going to throw a link in the chat here too, actually. Um, Unsplash could be useful. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's just a ton of um, free use pictures, um, but like really, really good pictures. So if you want to do like a background image or something, there's probably some cool stuff on there. Yeah, and uh, remember this is self-organizing, self so y'all all have to like kind of step up and figure out how you want to do that. Um, I would recommend again the, you know, generally start earlier and so you you have plenty of time yeah um, maybe figure out uh what you would like it to look like. like you know a small end goal in mind and then build towards that because it is very easy to get overwhelmed with too many details all at once and you end up with some analysis paralysis mm -hmm. so keep keep it very small like mindy said uh set small goals and just work towards them I think it's it's easy to, to it's easy to iterate on something as opposed to nothing. Um, I had a question. So since I'm guessing two weeks would be our final demo of it completed, right? So is there an expectation of what next week should look like, or is it just whatever we are at? Um uh, as far as like this meeting. Yeah, like, yeah. What is the expectation for our demo as a group? Yeah. So let's see. We have, um, we are on week seven, so we're starting right now, right? Yep. So next week we have, um, we do have listed a demo and a retro. So like, my assumption is just what, whatever, you, wherever you're at, whatever you're at, try to have it demoable yeah. in a demoable state. You good? 
Um, and we honestly, we haven't talked too much about the, um, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> my child is still sleeping, which is just amazing and unheard of. And my husband went into the hallway and was very confused about it. <laughs> just accurate. It's a good, good feeling. Um, we haven't really talked about it too much, but um, <clears throat> we also have a, had have, have had these self-study learning modules, which I'm kind of kicking myself. We probably should have been chatting about a little bit more um, as far as like a lot of the career lab aspects of Collab Lab. Um, incoming weeks. So there's a here an idea of pair interview practice between each other. Like if you wanted to get on a call and do some practicing of pair interviews. <clears throat> and then coming up, we also have the job fit mock interview with one of the mentors and, um, mm, sorry, weird <clears throat> throat thing, technical mock interview with one of your, with one of the mentors too. So, um, just kind of bear that in mind that those are coming up and kind of keep that in your, in your thoughts as well. But as far as like where next week, what next week's weekly sync is going to be, it's going to look like this. How has the career lab stuff been going? Have y'all have y'all touched on it or has it been too much with everything else? Um I yeah, I haven't done too much research into it. I will say though, office hours this week was and this kind of goes hand in hand. I think office hours this week was really fun. We just got to talk with Nathan about like how do we talk about this experience? Like yeah what even is the collab lab like how do I use this like moving forward um and it was kind of fun to like take a pause from like coding and kind of reflect in like a forward-thinking way I suppose mm -hmm. um and so I think like that kind of got my like the gears turning as far as like career like that perspective so that was really fun. I am excited to look into more of these um, like self self study learning modules. I haven't looked into any of them at all yet. I really liked. I felt like I I'm like when I went and watched these a long while ago. I really enjoyed the LinkedIn profile thing. I think that was very hands on, um, helpful. Remember that in particular. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, yeah, I looked at the LinkedIn one. I guess I did look at, I think I just haven't looked at this, the talk, the, the this week's or last week's, I guess. Yeah, that one, that's just the one I haven't seen. There's only two, I'm guessing, but yeah, they're very helpful. I like the LinkedIn one as well. Um, it, it looked like it was like uh, based off of Danny's, um, the, the person on LinkedIn who gives a lot of LinkedIn advice. So, but it was like, it felt very succinct because I know those videos can be long. So I was appreciative of that. It was really helpful. Nice. I think most of them are still recorded. So like they used, they, they used to be uh, like Q&A sessions with recruiters. And it was really interesting to hear how they would approach things like when they receive an application, you know, what, what do they look for? What catches their eye? Uh, so I think all of those are actually on the Collab Labs uh, YouTube channel as well. So, you know, you can always feel free to, to reference those things. Um, Andrew Andrew has one with a, a good talk on questions to ask your interviewers to help you sound a bit, a bit more. So uh, they're most, mostly recorded and just good resources to, to look at. Yeah. I feel like there was also a career. I was going to show y'all. There's also like a whole resource here, but I haven't. Heard, I'm not seeing it. It might be one of these. This is most of our stuff. So there are there are a lot more resources. Um, yeah, like watch our mentor, mentors interview each other. Uh, there's a bunch of those on YouTube, like Devin was talking about. Um.
there's a whole, we have so much stuff about job, job, career, look, career, uh, mm, looking for a job, <laughs> career resources. We have lots of those <laughs> all over the place. Awesome. Uh, I had like a random piece of advice pop into my head. It, it might exist in one of these videos, but I'm just going to throw it out there because it also might not. Um, it just occurred to me that literally every single interview I've ever done opens with tell me about yourself or walk me through your resume or something like that. So just a pro tip, practice that and figure out how to tell a story that like ties from your previous experience to now and like has the underlying tech thing. Like I always start mine talking about being a kid and liking taking apart old computers and stuff. I'm like, see, see, I like tech. I've always liked tech. You want to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> I always end up going into, um, I was a, I was a teacher and it really wasn't the right fit. And I got into software engineering and this is the fit. This is the, this is the thing that I do. And so it just was like, you want me here because this is what I do. <laughs> this, is, this is me. Yeah, like I'm going to be coding, whether you like it or not, you <laughs> might as well pay me for it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. I know that our next step is kind of make our uh, website look more professional, but I'm also wondering that, um, like, if we want to implement some other new features, um, so do we like it's still the same timeline? We have another two weeks to implement the new features if we want. Yeah, I think once you all agree as a team that those are the features you want to implement and that it does not interfere with the main goal of just having uh, a well-designed app. Mm. You know, if you do have the time and you're able to do it, I think by all means, go for it. Okay. We also haven't talked too much about this, but we are planning on doing like a cohort-wide demo so whoever would like to, like, you can decide at a later time who would want to jump in and do that in front of the the rest of the cohort. Um, but if if at all possible, I know that that was a fun thing that they did last last cohort and I had a lot of fun with. So. I mean, if if nothing else, it's still a very good practice talking about your work in technical and non-technical ways, which is what you will have to do. Uh, in technical interviews most times or even even uh, like HR interviews just you know tell me about something you've built like that question all right we're maybe done a little early unless there's more questions we could uh, the mentors could well actually I'm not sure if I can actually make y'all a host because of permissions but Y'all could get on the call and, and take the last 10 minutes to start collaborating, figure out what you want to do. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Are y'all free, Emma, Sarah, Marcos, do y'all want to stay on or hop in another call and kind of just touch grass for a second? <laughs> <laughs> cool. I can set up um, a Google Meet for us. That's a very funny phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, that's good. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Well, I guess we could wrap up here. Uh, leave it to you all. And yeah, reach out as needed. Mm -hmm. Have fun. All right. Good luck, Thank everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye.